All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Powers. I've got a couple interesting stories for you guys today. The first story um, is going to be on an interview actually done with Dorian Yates, asking his opinion on Brandon Curry and the 2019 Mr. Olympia lineup. Now, this was an interesting interview. It was done on the Valuetainment YouTube channel. Um, and Dorian had some pretty interesting things to say about both the lineup and Brandon. Um, so Dorian said, you know, in addition to a couple other things, he said that Brandon looked like about a six-week version out um, of Dorian. So Dorian was basically criticizing the conditioning of Brandon um, and saying that's about how Dorian would look conditioning-wise at six weeks out from a show. Um, and then Dorian went on to kind of compare that lineup, the top three there, uh, Bonac, Hottie, and Brandon, um, to like the 90s lineups. And he said that Brandon wouldn't even place top six in some of the Olympias that Dorian competed in and won back in the 90s. Now, this is certainly an interesting perspective to hear coming from Dorian Yates being a multiple-time Mr. Olympia champion himself. Um, and many people do look back at the 90s as being really the golden era of bodybuilding from a you know standpoint of conditioning and size and good shape and proportions. Um, the 90s was a really competitive era in bodybuilding. Um, and Dorian does even go on to say this was probably one of the weaker lineups or one of the weakest lineups in Olympia history that he can really remember, um, especially in comparison to the 90s, was kind of the focus of the interview, um, comparing how these guys looked to the 90s and, and the era that Dorian was winning the Olympia. And personally, I would have to agree that this is one of the weaker Olympia lineups. I wouldn't really agree that Brandon looked like he was six weeks out. I would agree that Brandon probably wasn't as sharp as I would have liked to see him. I thought he was going to be sharper. I think he was sharper at the Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio. Um, you know, I think it was a good version of Brandon. I don't think it was a fantastic 110% hands down version of Brandon. I don't think his conditioning was where it should have been, but I don't think that he looked six weeks out. I think that was a little bit of an overstatement. I do certainly think an argument could be made that there was better conditioning amongst some of the Olympia champions in the 90s than the conditioning that Brandon had. I do think the argument could be made um, for Hottie or Bonac having better conditioning than Brandon, which is basically what Dorian said in this interview. Um, he was saying that he believed Hottie and Bonac had superior condition to Brandon, um, but Brandon had a better stage presence, I believe Dorian said, and a better shape and a better look, and looked more like a Mr. Olympia, and that's why the judges went with Brandon. And I, can, I can kind of see that argument, um, but I still wouldn't really say Brandon's conditioning was bad. And to me, saying he looked like a six-week-out bodybuilder would be saying his conditioning was bad. Now, Dorian is an interesting guy. I've heard a lot of very interesting interviews with Dorian where he said a lot of interesting things. He said a lot of controversial things. Um, so everything Dorian says, I kind of take with a grain of salt, but it also holds a lot of weight because Dorian is a multiple-time Mr. Olympia winner. So Dorian's opinion on the current Mr. Olympia lineup is certainly something that I'm interested in hearing. But again, I would take it with a grain of salt because I've heard him say some things about Phil Heath. I've heard him say some things about some uh, historical events. I don't really want to get into that stuff, but he said some he said some weird things in interviews before, so I take everything he said with a grain of salt. Um, but it was an interesting interview. If you want to watch it, I'm going to link it in the description box below. Now, also in the news, we have an update from Big Rami here. So Big Rami posted this photo on his Instagram, um, presumably a recent posing uh, photo based on the videos that we've seen of him so far. This looks to be about the shape that he's been in over the past couple weeks. So he put up this physique update here, and he has the caption, I can't stop now. I will be back and much better in my next show. I only need hard work, and I'm putting in that extra hard work every day. Then he also has the hashtag Mr. Olympia 2020 on this post. Now, the only competition that we really have confirmation that we're probably definitely going to see Big Rami compete at is the 2020 Arnold Classic in March in Columbus, Ohio which is also likely that we're going to see Sean Roden compete at that show. So it will be a very competitive show. I'm sure the fact that Sean Roden and Big Rami have announced they're going to be competing there, or at least that they want to compete there, will probably attract some other big names um, to come to the 2020 Arnold Classic and try to compete with these guys because it's going to be a very deep lineup, likely if Sean Roden and Big Rami are going to be there. So I'm still convinced that Big Rami isn't going to wait all the way until March to compete. Now, he hasn't really given any confirmation of any show more uh, more recent than the Arnold Classic. And he hasn't really given any indication of plans to compete in anything other than the Arnold Classic. But personally, I think based on the conditioning that he has now, based on how he's looking, based on all these posing updates that he's been posting in these videos and these photos, 
I think he's getting for I think he's getting ready for a show before the Arnold. Whether he uses that show to be a warm up for the Arnold, or whether he uses that show to be kind of a a show that's easier to win before the Arnold, so he can get that Olympia qualification and go into the Arnold and not have to worry about whether or not he's going to be able to qualify um, because he's going to have to beat Sean Roden at the Arnold Classic. So the Arnold Classic, by no means, is going to be an easy Olympia qualification for Big Rami, and it's a little bit later on in the season. So it's, it's going to give Big Rami less time um, to focus exclusively on the Olympia. If he doesn't win the Arnold Classic, he's going to have to keep competing after the Arnold to try to qualify for the Olympia. And the Olympia is his goal in 2020. So personally, I think Big Rami's going to jump in a show way more recent than the Arnold Classic. He's just not really letting anybody in on it. Um, just based on, again, the conditioning and the pictures and the constant posing updates and photos that he's been posting. Now, granted, it could be something that his sponsors... Um, are trying to drum up some publicity for him. He's got the new sponsor uh, in Dragon Pharma. Uh, they could be telling him to post these things to kind of stir up speculation and you know try to get more attention on Big Rami to help you know really provide value to them. If more people are talking about Big Rami, more people are going to have eyes on his sponsor. So he could very well be waiting until the 2020 Arnold Classic to compete. But personally, I don't think that's the smart move. I think he's going to do a show before the Arnold um, and try to win a show before the Arnold and qualify. Um, then just go into the Arnold and, you know, have a nice competition with Sean Roden there. But he is looking pretty damn good in this update photo that he posted. All right. Now, the next story that I have for you guys today is going to be a Callum Von Moger story. So a lot of people have been tagging me in this post and sending me this post um, by Callum Von Moger. Obviously, over the past couple of years, Callum has had a lot of setbacks and a lot of injuries. Um, and he posted this posing video, which is really the first like full posing video we've seen from Callum in a while. Um, and a lot of people were asking me and speculating as to whether or not this is right now and whether or not this is a recent post or a throwback post. A lot of times when bodybuilders get injured or have setbacks, they'll post a lot of throwback pictures until they're back to 100% like in the present day. I think this is a current video of Callum Von Moger. And the reason why I say that um, is because I think that leg injury was really one of the biggest setbacks that Callum had. And you can really see um, kind of an imbalance in the legs. And there's still a lot of uh, you know size to be regained in the lower body particularly. And the biceps too. He had that bicep tear. And to me, there's a clear difference when he hits that front double bicep um, in the actual shape and length of the bicep heads from left to right. So I think this is a recent video. I don't think this is a throwback. I think this is how Callum is looking right now. Um, and I do think it's kind of a, a positive thing um, and probably you know suggests that Callum is getting very close to an actual competitive return, um, which is what I would really like to see from Callum. I would really like to see Callum return to a competitive bodybuilding stage, specifically a uh, NPC classic physique show, because again, Callum has not yet turned pro in the IFBB. He did compete like once or twice um, in the classic physique division in the NPC, but he has not yet earned his pro card. So I'm assuming that's going to be one of his goals when he does come back to competing. I believe he said um, before he got injured, his goal was to make the Olympia stage in classic physique. But now I'm pretty sure the goal um, has probably uh, reduced a little bit down to just getting that pro card in classic physique and then focusing on whether or not he could qualify for the Olympia. But Based on the number of guys competing in this year's Classic Physique Olympia, I actually don't think the Classic Physique Olympia's uh, qualification is as hard to achieve as the other divisions. There was like 36 or 37 guys, I think, in the Classic Physique division this year at the Olympia. And I believe it was the deepest division in terms of the number of competitors out of all the men's categories. So I think there's a lot of opportunities to qualify for the Classic Physique Olympia and I do think it's totally possible that we could see Callum Von Moger on that Classic Physique Olympia stage maybe in 2020. Now, also in the news, we have the rare Branch Warren physique update. So we haven't seen Branch Warren compete since about 2015. I believe the last show he did was the 2015 Mr. Olympia where he took sixth place. Um, he's currently 44 years old, so it's been about four years since we've seen Branch Warren compete. Actually, over four years since we've seen Branch Warren on a competitive bodybuilding stage. And he posted this physique update, just kind of standing in a front relaxed pose, um, looking to almost look pretty similar to how he looked back in 2015. Now, I know Branch Warren has been focused on more business related ventures and probably not as heavily on bodybuilding um, and training, but he does look pretty good here. So I got to give him credit. And I wanted to include this in this video because we rarely ever see a current physique update from Branch Warren. Um, and I think it's cool to see. Now, the final story that I have for you guys today is The Rock 
Dwayne The Rock Johnson made his big return to WWE. So WWE SmackDown has moved to Friday nights. It used to be on Tuesday nights. It moved to Friday nights. And it also moved to Fox. So it moved days and it moved channels. Um, and Dwayne The Rock Johnson made his uh, debut back in the WWE on SmackDown last night. Um, so that was an interesting thing to see. I believe he did some kind of promo with Becky Lynch. And it was interesting to see. And I wanted to include that in this video because we talked a little bit about The Rock's bodybuilding show, Athleticon 2020, which is going to be held in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, the potential for this to be a massive bodybuilding show and a massive thing for the IFBB and NPC um, is certainly there. Um, and I wanted to include The Rock returning to the WWE in this video because if he does return to the WWE in like an actual wrestling capacity as an active member of the SmackDown roster or, you know, just in any capacity where he's on TV more, he's televised more um, and he's like an active reoccurring character in the WWE would make his name even bigger in the months leading up to Athleticon and would give him a bigger platform to stand on when promoting Athleticon. And could there even be the possibility if The Rock is working with the WWE closely again, that the WWE somehow gets involved with Athleticon? Now, this is just pure speculation, but I think there is a possibility um, somewhere in there that if he returns to the WWE, there could be some WWE involvement or some kind of WWE show um, potentially an NXT show or something actually being held at this Athleticon event, which I think would be very, very cool to see. It would blow this event up to be something even bigger. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Please subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed already. And as always, Nick Strength and Power at 779,000 subscribers. Signing out.